game number six. This is game number six. This is going on a YouTube channel. If you're new to the stream, hit the follow button. And secondly, uh, go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the stuff. I did that bum win. <laughs> oh, man, Savage. That man nasty, bro. He's very, very strong. We know that. He was fourth seed in this tournament, too, right? He was like, and that's, that's crazy. That man pushing real tight. So here, um, yeah, this was game six. This was game six. Yeah. So game six here, it was all tied up. It was all tied up here. And we went into, he played a Scandi, which actually really surprised me here. Lita Snow Queen Nine says, hi, Kenzie. What's good? How are you? We in here. Welcome to the stream. This was, um, I was surprised by the Scandinavian because it wasn't in his repertoire at all. Center counter defense. Correct. It's, it's the Scandinavian center counter defense. Correct. That's the way to say it. You know, so let's see. Um, okay. So E4. He's twenty one hundred something. Who twenty one hundred? Savage. Who 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 twenty one hundred? That you might be twenty one hundred. You can put an extra six hundred points on that. To be to be uh, correct, big fella. On both on both ratings. You know, depending on what rating you're talking about. You know, then you have to go up. Salt and clowny, salty clown. Thanks, salty clown. What's up? Thanks to crew. What's going? Hallelujah, cat in the building. What's going on, Quinn? What's up, bro? So here it is, right? Scandy. Scandy land e4 d5. I did not think, um, I did not think he was gonna play a Scandy, so I took it. I'm like, oh, I was, I was like, okay, cool, we'll see what he plays in here. And I knew it, like, I, I studied like his repertoire, you know, pretty well and I was learning. And like, I didn't see no Scandies, so I was like, okay, I'm not that, I'm not afraid here at all. And I was expecting queen takes, but he played the knight of six one, which is uh, tricky. I would say tricky, and it's aggressive if you don't know what you're doing. Well, Canty was 21. I've seen him better than I can read. Was 21. Oh, <laughs> that, bro, that must that was super old, Savage. Super old. Yeah, he, that's way, that's a long, long time ago. Uh, we're watching the match, but has something else. Yeah, sorry, Canty. Uh, that's all good, Cat. Hello, Luke, Cat. No problem. 2400 feet 8 for sure. Yes, sir. Easy. So D4, Bishop G4. This is how you play this line. Literally, this is how you play this line. Um, you could also play c4 early. I don't like playing. I think they have that Iceland Gambit or something. If you play c4, I'm not a fan of that. But I just play d4, and I've learned this from Roman DG Hashvili. He has some very good lines here. Uh, excuse me. Roman was one of my favorites. Favorite GMs. So this Bishop g4 is what he liked to do. So I was using this. And uh, after Bishop, I mean, a Bishop g, against Bishop g4, we would play Bishop e2. That's what he would like to do. So we play Bishop e2 here. And then after takes, takes. And I'll show you guys briefly how this theory would work. Usually e6 is, is a different move. What you'll usually see is knight to c6. Um, or e5. It's usually knight c6 is a usual. e6 is a move too. But usually what I like to do is after knight c6, I castle with the intention of giving this pawn up. After this happens, we play check, hitting the king, of course, and taking on b7. If queen d7, we take here, and a7 is going to fall as well. So after moving the rook, we snap, and then we can just run this pawn for as long as we can. Put the bishop on e3 so the pawn on a7 is defended. Move the queen over, a little sh slight shuffle, nothing too serious, and then we queen in here. It's very simple how we win this one. So that's a very one, one way to play it, right? And then you have this other way. That after castling, there's rook, castle queen side, and this gets weird and, and aggressive. Bishop e3, we defend the pawn because it's now hanging. e5 is a bad one. I think e6 is the more logical one here in this line. He didn't play this, though. Very very entertaining match with Levy. I was in the chat going hard with your emails. Ah, I saw y'all. I saw y'all representing over here for the Jedi. Appreciate y'all, man. They were respecting you, Canty, but I knew you were going to give him a run for his money. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, man. I was studying hard, and, uh, you know, it just definitely showed me where I am at, where I should be playing. Proof. That's great. Now I just need to improve, even from there. Even Magnus, you know, is uh, improving his game. So no excuse for me. So after uh, Bishop E3 defending the pawn, E6 or E5 happens. If either or, I love to see E5 because now his queen can't swing this way. And then after C4, we hit the queen. The queen has to back up. You can play D5. Immediately, you're already crushing. This is hanging. A7 about to be hanging. I mean, this is a wrap. So actually, E6 is the move. And then after C4, queen H5. Thanks for the follow, Joni. J2, we in here. What's up, Dre? What's good, bro? Queen H5 and then knight C3. Bishop uh, d6, threatening, of course, bishop takes h2 in some cases, but my knight, my queen's defended. So c5, this is where I got the c5 idea from. I know um, 
I know Robert Hess, I watched the replay on chess.com. Shout out to the big fella Hess. There's no chess without Hess, right? Robert Hess was uh, commentating and he said, um, he was, he, you know, actually Aman was asking him about the C5 idea. And this is where I got it from. I got it from this line was usual. Usually you'll, you'll take, you know, different things from different variations and you'll still play something similar to it. So I played the C5. This C5 move does happen a lot in this line. Bishop backs up and then you hit him with B4. Let's go. Chess we with the raid. With the raid. What's up, my guy? Chess Weave in the building. We got Dana Sboros here, guys. Strong Grandmaster. You know? Shout out to Chess Weave in the building, y'all. Let's give him a big shout out and a warm welcome. Hope you had a great stream, bro. Appreciate you. We analyzed, and this is game six of the match yesterday. So, this is game six, bro. Game six. Or two days ago. Now, because now it's the 15th. Hey, James. Hope you had a great stream. Thanks, Chess Weave. Appreciate it, bro. Hope you had a great stream, man. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Thanks for the raid. Danis and Raiders. Yes, we're going over the match with Levy here. So we're analyzing some of the games. So this right here, though, in this Scandi line. And this Scandi line, when B4 happens, um, a lot of times Knight takes B4 happens. And then you go, uh, is it A3 or Rook B1? Shoot. What's the theory, bro? Oh, my goodness. How am I forgetting this right now? I haven't played this in a while. That's why. Oh, yeah, it is Rook B1. I was thinking, that, what, what do I do on Knight C6? But if Knight C6, you go Queen here. Game's over. I'm hitting B7. I'm hitting C6. This is a wrap. Start over. This is a new game. And uh, this is over, big fella. So knight, knight to D5, though. Knight to D5. And then actually after taking, watch this move. Uh, knight takes. Hit that man. C6. Get him out of here. I've actually played this. I played like a strong player. I can't remember. He was very strong. though. He was like 2,500 plus. I played this line, and he was so mad. that after I, It was so fast, too, right? Just making the moves because I remember this theory. And he was like, yeah, engine. He was so mad because he got crushed. And I'm like, oh, you playing the Scandi. So don't be mad at me because you got crushed playing this. Like, this is what I know. Did Canty win the thing? No, I actually lost in the bullet section. But it's a C6. Uh, but it was a draw up until then. It was like, you know, it was great. I was up a few games. I was up a game. Then I was down. Then I was up a game. Then we was drawn. And it was like back and forth, bro. It was a very, very intense match. But C6. And after here, the idea here, guys, of course, is mate. And we great. Get this off the screen. Okay, this is a family channel. Now, after pawn takes, it's very similar. You also can check. I wonder if there's something greater. I want to go 95, but I can't right now. So maybe just check him and just check him. But he's running. Like, he's running for his life here. He's running for his life. But, of course, White's in the driver's seat. You can do kind of all kind of things there. So let's go back, though. We have lost the match, but we won, your, but won our hearts. Oh, man. That's awesome. But this didn't happen. This is what I was expecting. And I was like, oh, let's go, Levy. You have lost your absolute. So, you know, I thought he was about to do this, but he did not. He actually played e6 and played it more conservative, actually. e6, so I castled, going for the same line. He went bishop d6. I went c4, same line. Queen h5. And here, you can't go c5. It was tricky. c5, he actually takes now on h2. Because your queen is undefended, my students know this one. Loose pieces lose games. So you can't have loose pieces. Loose means undefended. So that was what he was setting up. So, of course, I had to do something else. Either play h3 or knight c3. I think I did both. Because he played this multiple times. H3 and then castles. Then I played knight c3, knight c6. And here's that c5 the idea once again. I'm just going to play c5 and develop harmoniously. Pretty easy. c5, he went bishop e7. I developed with tempo, hitting f4. In one game, he actually gave me this pawn too, which is not that good. Bishop take, bishop f4, he went knight d5 and we live. I could have taked or uh, captured here and took on f4. Which uh, that leads to this position. Bishop takes, and then I think he has knight takes. And then this is just like this is kind of the scanty positions they want. They want trades, they want end games. So I try to stay away from that. Knight to d5. I went bishop h2 here. Oops. Wow. Whoa. Let's go all the way back. Okay. All right. Run that back one time. Run that back. So here, let's go here. Uh, after knight d5, I went bishop h2. After bishop h2 here, I, I didn't care about captures. I was going to have a nice strong b pawn. You know, but I was starting to realize, like, okay, this is this isn't really the position I was looking for yet, because I really want a king side attack. That's what I'm always looking for in the Scandies, but uh, it wasn't what I wanted. I did realize that. So after Bishop F6, at least I have my pieces out and developed. 94, right? I'll move around a little bit. And here, let me actually see what the engine likes, because here this was kind of tough. Yeah, it's very equal. You see this? It's very equal, and I kind of felt that. I was like, this is, I got space. My pieces are good, but I don't really know. I don't really know. So, and even the engine confirms that. So what did I do? I just played a3 first, maybe to gain some space with b4. Don't really know yet. I just played a3 because also maybe a knight could come to b4. I don't know. I just played a3. I needed a move. 
He played rook f to e8. I need another move as well. Rook f to e1. Just trying to figure this out. We are playing time at this point too as well, right? It's still super equal. So he played h6. I hit him with rook d3. Wow, that's an engine move too. I thought I saw d3. Maybe I thought I saw rook d3 there for a quick second. But I played rook d3 because I have aspirations of eventually somehow swinging. Somehow, some way. We don't know. Maybe I could double the file because I really didn't know what else to do here. I really didn't know what else to do. This just wasn't easy at all. You know what I mean? So, um, actually, after uh, H6, wait, hold on. What happened? Where's the rest of the game? Oh, he played it. Okay, H6, Bishop D3. Oh, Rook D3. I went Rook D3. Honestly, I just didn't know what to do. But you see here, it's equal. So, I wasn't I wasn't uh, mad about the position. I'm just like, I don't know what to do, actually. I need a good plan. So, I just tried to make pieces a little bit better. I think the Rook lift is going to help me. Maybe doubling here. You know, I think uh, I just kind of misplayed this. This G4 move, though, I like this move because it was very aggressive. It was very aggressive. And I remember playing this. I think this is where I spent some time. I spent some time right here. And after G4 happened, I was expecting queen takes H3. Now, if queen takes H3, can anyone tell me what would you play if queen takes H3? Th what did I have planned for queen takes H3? He says, was knight takes f6, bishop takes c7 so bad? Um, Actually, well, no, but he's just going to open the file. And this is what he's saying. Like, you guys, he's saying, like, you know, knight takes. He's just going to open the file, which, honestly, that's not bad. If I, if I can't do anything about this, which I really can't right now. And then f5 is coming, too. In some cases, then I'll have the e5 square. But this isn't as scary as it looks. You know, I play these kind of positions all the time, playing a hyper-accelerated Shreshnikovs, right? So rook to g8 is uh i mean this is nice he can also double play rook to g6 at some point double the rooks on, on the file with a smile and i'm looking crazy right so you know it doesn't i wasn't into that and i think i did end up doing it but i needed to do it at the right time so let me see actually after uh g4 right queen takes h3 is on the board what do we have in the chat knight g5 right one of the knights come into g5 knight e5 yeah, I think I was going to play 95, to be honest, um, 95. I have one of these in mind. I knew I was going to move one of these knights. And, of course, it has to be this one because this one's defending the G4 pawn. If you do it with the other knight, knight G5, he takes on G4, and you, you, you're just losing. This is embarrassing. But knight G5 here, though, is a little bit different. I am hitting G4. I'm also hitting F7, which is tied to the rook, and there's check as well. This was my plan here. You know, groovy glasses. Thanks, bro. Teenage Mutant, appreciate it. Yeah, so I was going to do this. This was the idea, but I also liked 95. I liked both. And I was trying to see which one was better, honestly. But let's see what the engine thinks about this. They like knight takes f6 first and then playing 95. Yeah, so literally all of the moves could have been played. 95, knight f to g5, and knight takes f6. If queen takes h3. But he didn't play that. I mean, he didn't play that at all. Thanks for the follow, Valtin RS. Welcome to the stream. If you are new to the stream here, hit the follow button. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and hop in our Discord. Hang out with us after hours. I should mention that thousands of people saw Canty without sunglasses for the first time. <laughs> I know, bro. It was crazy. But that's how you knew I was real serious. Like, that's one of, one of those, you know, you train with the robe on. I'm in the hyperbolic chamber with my Jedi. You know, we trying out sabers. We doing our thing. We training. You know, you got the robe on. You chilling. You know, you still working hard, but you chilling. But then when you take that robe off, it was one of those moments. You take that robe off. You know that man about to get to work. So it was one of those, big fella. It was one of those. Um, because I was about to be locked in with a monster for hours and only one person's coming out alive, you know. Yeah, that was a sweet uh, yeah, this was a sweet next game on him. <laughs> right, so you know, but here actually this is what happened. So now let me show you the live part of the game. Um so the live game I played G4, he played Queen G6, right? And now here I was very not confused. I actually was getting in time trouble here as well. And this one got very complicated i knew i had some good moves and so like but i had time trouble time trouble you know will always get you here so i took on f6 but let's see what the engine likes best moves here are rook e to d1 wasn't a big fan of that bishop g3 that looks good but not a big fan and rook d to d1 yeah i'm not a fan of any of these actually so i took on f6 and you see how equal it gets you know after g takes f6 you know what I'm saying? Don't cry wolf, because you was like, take it, right? 
And even after taking it, he does take with the G-pawn and makes it equal, you know. But, I mean, still, I took here because I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to take the bishop now. I was also getting low on time. So, G takes F6. Uh, I went knight H4. Why did I go here? I think one for time and two, I just needed to move. So, I think knight G, I was going for knight G2 kind of stuff. Let's turn this off now. Queen G5, I went back to F3, repeating moves. I would have taken a draw because I knew I was getting low on time. And I'm like, if he repeats, I'm definitely going to take a draw because I was definitely low on time. Super low. Thanks for the follow on Twitter. Appreciate that. Queen G7, King H1, Rook G8, um, Knight D2. Yeah, I wasn't liking this, though. I wasn't liking this that much. I knew I had to maneuver a lot. I went back to F3 again. I went back to D2. You see what I'm saying? Like, I was getting in time trouble here. And then he played Knight G6, and I went Rook F3. Now, here's the idea, guys. Watch this, right? Watch this. I don't know what he was going to do. Like, if I had another move here, I don't know what he's going to do. Like, like maybe H5, right? Then I was planning to take on F6 in some cases, but not this one. Because I don't have Bishop E5 now. But there was a time, I think he moved his knight. Oh, that's what I was waiting on. Here. I was waiting on knight H4. Yeah, there you go. You seen that? Don't cry off. Yeah. I was waiting on him to play here because it hits the rook. And I was going to take with the rook. Rook takes F6. And then knight takes and knight takes. Hitting this, the idea, guys, is after queen takes bishop e5. And we live. Get the man off the board. I was ready. I was so ready to play this line. Because knight h4 is a natural move here. But I am playing a monster, you know. So he's going to see some of this stuff too, obviously. But I was definitely looking at knight h4. Rook takes f6. Snap, snaps. And then I, th I was thinking, like, what if he moves the rook? Then rook f8 and I hit him with bishop e5 anyway. And have a nice day. If knight g6, knight h5, and we live. Come on now. Come on now. Give me something, big fella. Give me something. So it, that's what I was going for. And he didn't do that. He played e5, actually. So I needed to move. I'm like, is it there? It's not there yet. Okay. So I, I took. And let's actually see if there's something better here. Rook f5. And taking is a move. And c6. Okay. So taking, I, I captured. He captured. I went knight g3. So here I'm actually doing well. I'm doing well here. And actually, I was looking at the replay, and Robert and them, they showed me a line. I'm like, why didn't I do that? And I remember why I didn't do it, because I was so low on time. I was so low on time. And when you're in time trouble, man, it just sucks to be in time trouble, right? So, uh, Queen E4, right? Um, the game's finally coming back in my, my favor here. I played Knight H5. I knew I was really low on time here. I didn't like Knight F5 because I'm blocking everything. And I knew if knight h5, yeah, I know that there's a battery here and g2 is mate. But at the right moment, I can play rook g3 and block the mate. And that's what happened. So knight h5, snap, snap. He went knight f4. And what I was supposed to do, I played rook g3, right? And then he played queen h7. And all I was supposed to do was trade and take the knight. Trade and take the knight. But I didn't have enough time. I was just, I, I just moved. I think I just moved. What did I do? I played uh, queen f3 because I was like, I got to move. I got to move. And I was immediately in trouble. Rook takes g8 though. And no matter how you capture it, queen, rook, king, doesn't matter. I take on f4. And now this is a better position. This is much better than what, what happened in this game. Much better than what happened in this game. So I went queen f3. He went queen f5. I doubled up. And this is this wasn't that fun. Takes takes, and my only move right. This is where it happened right here. I I, I played queen f one and instantly jumped off the deep end. Found the tallest building I could find and leaped off of it. But queen takes b seven though. Uh, thanks for the follow, J P Colin. Queen takes b seven though. I and I saw this because I was like, oh, I have to keep this diagonal because he has a check. You ever done that before? We're like, oh, I got to do this because if I don't, I'm gonna be made it. And you still do the thing you're not supposed to because and you get made it. That's what happened, right? I was supposed to take on b7. Totally fine. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Let's take that back. Maybe not totally fine because this is very scary. But queen takes b7, right? Yeah, this is at minus 7, right? Knight takes h3. This isn't fine at all. But let's go back here. You know, at least I would have probably held a little bit, you know. Absolutely, man, from Florida. That's exactly what happened. So I went queen f1, right? This is not a move. That's not a move, bro. Not a move at all. He hit me with the check, flexed real hard on me. I play rook g2. He takes, and then I missed a perpetual check. But of course, right here, you know, oh, actually, it's, maybe it's not. I thought it was perpetual. It looks like it, but I guess he can go king g8, and it's not a perpetual anymore. Queen e6, king f8, check, king e8, queen e6, king d8, queen g8. Oh, my goodness. This is ridiculous. King d7, queen g7 king c6 and then queen g6 out of all of that so that would have been a lot of checks but that was my best bet from that position 
Definitely messed that up there, right? So after that, I played on because you should just play on, right? And let's fast forward here. I have nothing to hope for here. Nothing to hope for at all. Eval bar, here you go. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I had nothing to hope for here at all. So I'm just moving, you know, thinking about my next game, thinking about life, thinking about how did I do this? What am I doing with my life? Why am I even still playing? And then I resigned here. I was mad about that game. But again, let's go back to the through that again. I made my adjustments on what I should have adjusted on. C4, H3. I liked my C5 move. And then uh, Bishop F4. Now, I probably next time should just take this and play Rick D1. But let's see again what we should be doing. Takes, takes. It says take on C7. So what's wrong with... Well, let's go there. Let's go this route. Bishop H2 here. Yeah, I actually, I mean, I can still play this line and get away with it, honestly. This was fine. The part around here, this was good. This was okay here. This was okay. I mean, all of this can be played still. All of this, this whole line. I just can't go queen e4. I have to take g8 and take on f4. And then this is much better. Rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes f4. Or say take this first. What if I take on f4? It doesn't really matter. Kind of does, but it doesn't. Bishop takes f4. E takes. Now they probably would trade queens, to be honest. That's what most people would do. C6. That's a strong move, boy. I did not consider that one. C6. That's a daring move, my guy. Rook takes f4 now. C6. Boy, that was sweet. In games are tough. Wow. That was pretty good. But yeah, we learned from this game, right? So I have to bounce back. Now at this point, the score is three and a half, two and a half. He wins that one. Now let's go to the next game. Thanks for the follow, Chef Waz. We in here. We in here, big fella. Welcome to the stream. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So here's the next one. And then this is the last game of the five minute portion before we went into the three one. Okay. We went into the three one right here after this game. All right, let's go to it. So this game, I played black in this one after losing with the white pieces. Oh, invalid PGN. What are you talking about? What? Invalid PGN? Where and how? This is the PGN that y'all gave me. Oh, they tripping. There's a dollar sign in there. Did anybody else catch that? There was a dollar sign in there. Has anyone ever seen a dollar sign in a PGN? If not, we're going to just do it this other way. There's another way we can do this. Let me see if that's there again. That was a real dollar sign in there. There it is, too. Like, there's a dollar sign right here. Is that supposed to be there? It feels like that's wrong. Invalid PGN. I'm about to try that and delete that little dollar sign. What is that? That looks like a misprint. It looks like a misprint. Hey, one, what is this nonsense right there? I don't know what that is. Oh my goodness. Rick takes F6. Let's just try this. Does this work? Nope, doesn't work. All right, so this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do here, y'all. We're about to go to analysis board right here. Like this. Yeah, we'll look at it this way. Look at it this way. And then um, get out of this one. Thanks for the follow, by the way. Snee. Snea Figurin. Because that game was money. That game was money. <laughs> That's right, Gizmeister. Flex. Flex on him, Gizmeister. Okay, so here we go. So this was I played black here. This is game. I was five. Six. This is game seven. I feel like I'm talking about the NBA finals. This is game seven. Right. So this is game seven right here. And I have to win this game so I don't lose. I don't have a two point deficit because he's up a game here. So here we go. D4, Knight of six. And here we go with Bishop G5. So tired of this opening. I mean, at this point I was because I'm like, he's he kept playing the same. Line. I was prepared for literally like everything else. The Toronto variation. There you go. Yeah, I was ready for uh, I had a lot of prep for this Trumpowski, to, to be honest. But the prep I didn't prep the most for was the line that he played. Ironic, right? So, which is uh, 94, right? Uh, and then after H4, I knew he plays this. I mean, he has a whole bunch of games with this opening. So I know he was going to play H4. I prepped C5. I prepped D5. I prepped Queen B6. But I didn't prep as much for uh, 92 was correct, H6. But Bishop F4 was the move that is the most annoying. 
And that's what he played. Uh, captures is a move. Bishop e3 is a move, right? You know, but bishop f4, yeah, it's a move, but it's annoying, right? So now bishop e5, I mean, look how equal it is. But again, I was saying this yet, uh, yesterday when he was doing analysis and I was talking like, hey, look, I don't like to be, I like to be on the attacking side of the tactics, not the defending side. Not that there's something wrong with that, but I'm a tactical player. I like the attacking. And, you know, when you have to defend, even though I'm getting a pawn here, bam, I snap a pawn, right? Snapping a pawn and then queen back to b4 check. This is the line. So check, the idea here is both these pieces are undefended. Loose pieces lose games like we talked about before. Loose means undefended. So these are undefended pieces. So this is why this tactic works. But he's going to get, you know, some counterplay. My queen's in the center. I'm undeveloped. And, you know, white is able to get some counterplay in his cramped positions. So I didn't like, I don't like this as much as I thought I was when I was doing this in my analysis and my study. So he played e3, defending, trying to get the bishop out. But I knew anytime he moves the bishop, g2 is going to hang. Even though my queen's a little short on spaces, I did know that. Uh, I played e5 here. I like this e5 move. The engine actually was recommending e6 after we took our little break or whatever. Once I took a, a once we took our little breaks, you know, like a five minute break, I would go check the engine real fast before the next before the next game to see. And engine was like an e6. That's why I played e6 in one of the games. But I like this e5 move. I actually came up with this myself here, but. Uh-huh, like we've seen this a few times. Yeah, right. Right. I like loose pieces of those games. I'm using I'm I'm used to hearing loose pieces fall off. Right. Right. That's the same thing. Thanks for the follow, Echo Mali. What about Ampassant? Well, Ampassant is honestly it would be the same thing. I don't think about it. It actually would be exactly the same thing. But here, um, I like the D takes E6 option, where as, as actually I was looking at a different engine. And uh, it was still Stockfish, but it was different. So it was given e6, and then queen takes e6 in a, in a weird kind of line. But this this right here is giving d takes e6 followed by d takes e6, which is what I wanted to play. So I probably should have captured this way anyway, because this is what I wanted to play. It's most principled. But I was actually kind of just following what the engine was telling me there. That's why sometimes you shouldn't do that. So going back, though, after um, – thanks for the follow. Boring beer. Welcome to the stream, bro. After e3, e5. F3, right? He hit me with F3. It's still equal right here. I only have one move for my queen. Not one. I got all these. I actually did play queen h7 in that one game. That was cool. Very impressive watching uh, your queen sit there. Move after move. No danger. Yeah, right? I know. It, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny to be able to do this. Right? And it was actually saying that in commentary too. But I moved my queen to F5. But it's pretty equal here if you see this. It's pretty equal, right? G4. I played queen F6. And I knew I knew that I was equal. But I, this, was, this was hard to figure out later. He played bishop g3. I played d6, but I'm cramped. I am very cramped here. d6, rook to b1. Best moves are knight d7, queen d8, making another queen move, right? I mean, how many do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven queen moves, my guy. What move number are we on? What move number? 13? And we made eight, seven, eight queen moves. And we all move 13. You know, this is why this this is why people play the Trumpowski in this line in particular, because of the tempi that you lose that will cause you to give the pawn back in a position that you're not ready to give it back in. That's a very, very deep understanding of this opening. And now I'm not probably playing this line anymore. I'm going to hit him with the knight g8 and we great out the opes, you know, so out the opes, bishop g5, knight g8, have a good day, right? I'm really going to be prepping that because like a... Uh, I don't want to play the Trump. I don't want to play against this garbage. And it's not garbage, but it is annoying. So much opening principles. I know, bro, right? That's how we do around here. So I played D6, though, right? D6, he played rook B1. I played E4. So this was just a bad move, I guess. E4 is an accuracy. Knight D7 was best. Knight D7 followed by Queen C2 and some other work, apparently. So um, cool. Tristan just got your booking for the lesson, bro. I will see you in four days on that. Let's get it, bro. So... It's um, d6, rook b1, e4. Reason for this, I wanted to take on c3. This is why I did it. I wanted to take on c3 and also be hitting f3. But I also missed, and I, I kind of slightly missed that queen a4 was checked. I really did, bro. And I'm like, put my head down like, bro, what am I doing? But th th this was a very cramped position. I should have played knight d7 first. But I didn't want to give him time to do anything because I think he could have played, well, then I could have played e4 anyway. Knight d7. Bishop d3. Can I play e4 anyway? Not really recommended. They don't. Oh, it's still fine though. It's still a fine move. 
And then I would have went for this and tried to play knight f6 was my idea. Very close position though. Not a fan of the big close positions like that. So d6, rook b1. I play e4. He hit me with the check. Knight d7 takes. But surprisingly, right? You know, I gave him the pawn back. And um, it's not bad for me. A6 is good. Rook b8 was our alternative. I was afraid of this g5 move that he never played. Even Hikaru pointed this out. He was like, G5. And I'm like, yeah, I don't like my queen getting to G6. He, but I want, I guess, you know, first he played Rook B1, or Rook here. And this is where I thought, because I'm like, what do I do right here? I don't know. I don't know. Castling, I'm castling looking crazy. I'm not about to castle. Actually, King D8 is a move now. King D8 was a move recommended now. Let's actually take a look at uh some of the lines here. Oh, yeah, yeah, right here. Right here. King D8. Yeah, King D8 is a move right now. And, um, well... Is saying after c4, but here I played a6. There a rook b8 is an alternative. They also wait. There's a line for king d8. I know it was, but there was a line for king d8 and just getting out of the way. And they're trying to play like rook e8 maybe and bishop f8. But again, I'm not trying to play this. I'm not trying to play this Trumpowski no more this way because it's so cramped. I'm just like it's so cramped. Even though I was up that pawn, like as a human, it's very hard to navigate this position. So I played a6. Thank you for the follow. Uh, Joawa JMV, and here I wanted to see. I, I was waiting for G5, I was waiting for it. I was like, Well, here it comes, bracing for it. You, you ready to block with your face? You know, you ready here. I'm like, Let's go, big fella. Here we go, G5, because I knew I had to go Queen G6. I don't have another move, I don't have a choice. I have to go Queen G6. If I do take HJG5, then I'm out here looking crazy, like in front of everybody. Let's not do this, right? There was like 50,000 people watching. Okay, I'm not trying to be out here be looking crazy. So you got to play Queen G6. You got to play Queen G6. It was no other move here. And I thought, you know, it looks are very deceiving in chess, but I thought that I just would be super worse. It just feels like that, to be honest. But as you see, looks are very deceiving in chess. It's actually pretty equal. Now I'm actually attacking G5 still. There's weaknesses. Yeah, I got double pawns here, but that's about it. And, and White has some weaknesses of his own. So it's actually not that bad. And I was thinking, could you, I'm like, but it makes sense. Like Levy didn't play G5 at all. He never played G5. I think he played it eventually, which was like, wow, that's why. Yeah, H5 in the castle was another one too, right? So I was like, okay, that makes sense now. You know, later on, he just never wanted to play G5. Because Queen G6, he wasn't getting as much as he thought he was. Like, But I thought he was going to play it. He played A4, and I played B5 anyway. And here's my intention here. I played B5 because I didn't know what else to do. What was the best move, though? Let's see. B5, C4. Wow. That's a strong. Let's go back. C4. Dang. What if he takes with the queen? Excuse me. Castles? Bishop takes C4. Wait, wait, wait. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate that. Jonas Freire. Freire. Jonas Freire, thank you so much. That was not a fan of that C4 move, to be honest. I didn't even see that. I played B5, though. And after, he didn't take, oh, A takes B5. So this is what I was looking at, though. This was my idea. A takes, A takes. Thanks for the follow, Volte. Appreciate it. So right here, I actually, and this is what Robert has pointed out. And actually, after I look, I didn't know that I was supposed to be losing here. This was my, my idea, guys. I was about to play Rook A1. Because my position was so cramped here that I need counterplay. And that's where I thrive in counter. I thrive in counterplay and tactics. So I want to always keep it in those realms. So, you know, I have to, sometimes you have to sacrifice pawns to do so. So rook a1, but I'm losing immediately. Immediately it's losing. And honestly, I didn't see it. Like, let's actually check the line, right? Rook takes a1. It's supposed to be played. I take. And then he runs his king. And then I take. And all he has to do is take on d6. Patrick does play. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for the follow. And this is just a losing position now. But uh, I was trying to go for something like this because I was like, I need some counterplay. So Rick A1 was too aggressive. But Queen G6, as you see here, I sacrificed that pawn. White's only up a little bit here, which is this is playable. Rick A5. But again, like I have a cramped position. Like I'm not trying to play like this over to. Oh, we see the bishop. Yeah, I'm not trying to play like this over the board or like having problems against this Trumpowski like this. So. It's a very cramped position. Thanks for the follow. ENT Kwame. Thank you. Appreciate that. So I played B5. He played Knight H3. I was actually surprised here that he didn't take on B5. He played Knight H3. Honestly, it was weird to me too. I mean, the engine's like question mark. I'm like, me too. 
Me too, right? I, okay, knight h3. So what do you play? He has something else in mind. I played knight e5, and this one was an inaccuracy. C4 was the best. But at this point, I'm like, no, why? I need to I need to develop. I got to develop, okay? So I, and I'm not about, like, I've been sitting here for days, it feels like, years, not being able to move anything. So I had to go knight e5. Like, I didn't even think twice about it. I went knight e5 real quick because f3 is hanging now. I was about, I'm about to do this right now. What's the idea behind c4? Actually, it's a beautiful move. It's, the idea is it's knight c5. I just get some space now. Huge space. And bishop b7 can be played afterwards now. But, dude, you play awesome things. JTS, appreciate it. Levy is a beginner YouTube teacher. Yeah, he does more, a little bit more, too. But, yeah, he does cater to beginners, too. But a majority of chess, you got to think about that, too. He's hitting the, the biggest market in chess, which is the beginners. Biggest market. I mean, very, very smart. He's a very smart um, content creator. It was close, but Levy is just better build play. But Levy's, Levy's the, a beast. I mean, just he hit three three k three thousand. There's a very a very small list of people that hit three thousand in anything, but definitely in bullet chess. He's in that small bunch. That was a lot of fun to watch. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Hey, Jimmy, what's up, Josh? What's good, big fella? Yeah, we going over. This is game seven right now. This is game seven. I'm down one game, and this is down set. This is a uh, game seven. Right here. So I played, uh, I didn't play C4. And when, good morning from EU. Europe in the building. What's good? What's good? I hope that's Europe, right? Or it's not. Is that like a university? It must be Europe. It got to be. As a Levy fan, great watching you play. Thank you, bro. Levy is a chess I am and a marketing super GM. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Absolutely believe that. No, it's Europe. Europe in the building. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome, Europe. Welcome. I got a students in Europe. UK, London. So Night H3. Knight e5 is what I play here. Hitting the f3 pawn. Because I needed to. I got to put some work in here, yo. And if he takes with the bishop. If he does bishop takes e5. I have to take with the queen. Why? Because if d takes, I'm losing on the spot. Whoa. I'm not, though. A d6. I thought he was hitting everything. GG, start a new game. But I'm not. Rook b8. I got to see this. I got to see this one. How is that? I'm down a piece. I'm down a piece. So, like, how am I not minus everything in life here? Rook H2. This don't make sense. I don't get that. I'm not I'm not playing this. I'm not. Let's just get this off screen. This is what I say to the engine all the time. Sometimes, like, I'm not doing this, engine. No, you have it. You can have it. I'm out of here. Stop this. Stop this nonsense. We're going to take it with the queen. And then takes and takes. And now this is a position. Yeah, I know he gets to spawn, right? But, hey, the worst is over for me. The worst is over now. I'm just down a pawn now in this end game with activity, stuff to hit. And I got an extra bishop. You know, I think I'm going to have a dark square bishop. So equal engine belief so as well. So this is, I was fine with this. I was fine. I was in a canty camp, aggressive chess all the way. That's right, JTS. Tell him two times, big fella. Tell him two times. 95, he went knight at four. And after knight at four here, actually, let me move this around. Sorry, guys. Move this over here. Okay, uh, so knight f4, right? He plays knight f4, and what did I play after this? I'm trying to remember myself. I think I just took on a4, and oh no, I castled. Oh snap, I was a savage for that. I don't even remember doing that. It's just castle in the face of danger here, you know? When you're a Jedi, you just go in the ring sometimes, don't even know what you want to do. Duboff will be playing this, giving all his pieces. Uh, you know what's funny? Um, the night before, actually, I watched a lot of Duboff on YouTube. I was watching his games. Which is just inspiration. Dubov is not a modern day Tao. He's more like a solid Tao, I would think. Maybe not solid, but he doesn't take as many risks as Tao does. But he does. Like He's very tactical and aggressive. And that's what I really like. So I try to model my game or like looking for inspiration, motivation, stuff like that on how they play. Like Dubov is somebody I actually watch quite frequently because of uh, his swashbuckling style of chess. And that's how I am. Swashbuckling and creative. Dubov is so creative. I love watching him. Man, that's my guy. His opening preparation is insane. He, might, he finds super tricky lines. That's right, bro. That's how I'm trying to get Josh. That's how I'm on that level. You know You know what I'm saying, big fella? It's because of engine error. Mikhail would have been always be accurate with his wrist. Yeah, correct. Correct. Yeah, wouldn't always be accurate with his wrist. Yeah, that's right. So I think Dubov might be like sort of, sort of a modern day tile. Sort of. You know, that's why I like those kind of games. So um, Night at 4, though. Um, I castled. I was like, let's get it, big fella. And he didn't play G5, but I knew that if he does play G5, I'm going to capture it. Open the H file. I know that looks like suicide, but I always have queen F5. 
And that was my intention to take on a G file. And then if something happened, I was going to run for the hills, rig D8 and run for my absolute life as quickly as possible. <laughs> if I, if I can, if I can. So I took on a four now. Oh, this was, they said this was an excellent move. Nice. And I took here because I know if stuff starts to trade, if we start trading down, I'm eventually going to have a pass pawn. And I think this is actually the pawn I used too. think about that. So B takes a four. Watch this. He took on a four or maybe it wasn't. It was actually this pawn. It wasn't a pawn. No. Queen a4, I played bishop d7. This was wrong, but I mean, so what? Like, I'm developing my last piece with tempo, and now my rooks are connected. Well, queen, c, uh, queen c2, I play rook to b8, ready to go. And he finally went forward. Here it is, g5, and we live. Snap, snap. And then I went queen a5 to block it, obvious reasons. There's mates on the board, so I have to block the mate. Queen f5. Bro, I was trying to study your games, but I can only see the past 10. How can I see more like this? Real simple, bro. Go to the home page like this. Go to the home page. You're going to go over here to stats. You're going to click on stats. When you get to stats, you're going to scroll to the bottom. Click on completed games. Bam. You're going to see everything in here. Then you can scroll all the way to the bottom. And it's going to say you can look further to see which ones. You're going to click the live chess games, big fella. And then you're going to be right there, my guy. Just like that. Just like that. It's a Jedi thing. I got you. So let's get out of here, though, and go back to the game. Not this one. It's this one. Yeah, so queen f5. Queen f5 stops the mate. So there's no, there's no mate anymore. So now that there's no mate, cool, I'm good to go. He captures it. And actually, Nakamura, Hikaru was mad about this move. He was like, bro, why would you take the queen? Like, what are you doing? Basically, the kind of thing. Are you on the phone? Ooh, that's tough to do. I don't think you can do it on the phone. I don't think it's possible on the phone. By the way, has anybody been having trouble? Can anybody play a live game on a phone? Anybody? Can anyone in the chat, can you play a live game on your phone? I've been trying to do that all day, bro. And I've been mad to like, cause like, you know, I'll take breaks from like studying and like chilling. I'll be chilling with my sons or like doing something. And I couldn't play chess on my phone. And I'm like, yo, I always play live games on my phone. Like I play, I mean, close to 10, 20 games a day on my phone sometimes. It was kind of annoying. I was like, yo, why can't I play no games on my phone, bro? Can anyone play a game of live chess on their phone right now? No from Josh. You're going to slip every move. I can't. I play bullet. I'm playing right now. Bad connection. All right. I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try it again, bro. Same. Yes. I always play on my phone. Man, I'm having, I was having some issues all day, all day. I can't either. So what is it telling you? If you, yeah, I'm playing right now. If if you play for you, that's having problems. Been telling me no recently. Yeah. It's been telling me game, bro. What's it? Hold on, bro. I'm about to do this right now. I play chess on my pager. I just tried it. Let me, it said, let me exit out of live chess because you can't be in like two live chesses. I'm about to try this right now because I was trying to do this and it didn't work. I'm going to have to abort this game though. New game. Let's try 3-0. Challenge does not exist. What is that? Does anybody know, bro? I'm about to hit up chess.com. But it keeps saying challenge does not exist. Like, what does that even mean? Can y'all even see this right here? Hold on. Let me click play. Click play. I click play and it say challenge don't exist. It keep doing that. I done switched up the settings. I done did everything. And it keeps saying that. Challenge don't exist, bro. What is that? I'm trying to play chess.com on my phone. You know what I'm saying? I'm mad. Like throw on my phone. I didn't do that, but I wanted to. You see better playing with your PC. I know, but you know, sometimes I want to be on my phone playing. Like I want to be on my phone playing. Sometimes clear to cast or something. I mean, I don't know, man. You know what? I might uninstall this app and try to reinstall it. Your staff asked your man's in them. I am. I am. But like nobody else was having problems. So I thought it was just my phone. I'm like, maybe it's just my phone right now. You know, so now that I'm on with y'all, maybe y'all having trouble too. You know, let me restart my phone right now though. Why y'all playing? I usually don't even do that. Dang, how you do this? Siri tripping. That's kind of weird. I got this, uh, what's this, the 11? iPhone 11. Thanks for the follow, Rothman OG. We in here. Yo, how you turn this off? How you turn this off? Wow. I don't know what I'm doing right now. JTS returns 1987 with the tier one. I have no idea how to turn this phone off right now. What am I doing, y'all? Can somebody help me, please? It's this button on the right, right? You know how long I had an iPhone? I can't turn this phone off. I literally never turn my phone off. 
I have no idea what I'm doing, bro. I know all this tech, but can't turn my iPhone off. This is crazy. Bro, what is going on? All right, hold on. Let me stop. Every time I hold it, Siri coming up. It's like tripping. Every time I hold it, it should bring you to the side. I thought so, but Siri keep popping up. It's kind of weird. I mean, I'm doing that. Like, look at this, right? They took away the long press to prevent accidental. Bro, we on YouTube. Try it later. <laughs> we are on YouTube right now. Now, this is for the YouTube channel, right? But we probably just going to cut this part out. But, man, that's, uh, that's kind of weird, my guy. Dang, bro. This is messed up. So let's get back to the game, y'all. All right, well, back to the game here. So I played queen f5, and uh, after queen f5, he snaps. I know, apple tripping, right? You got to hold the button up, Valium. Oh, you right, Dre. Oh, you right. I think you are right, bro. Hold up. Hold up. Nope, didn't work. Didn't work. All right. Cool, bro. Cool. I don't even know. Like, can't, can't turn my phone off. Never seen that. Bitch, takes F5. Hold the side button at the top. And the top value button. Ooh. 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 Slice master, boy. Look at him. Oh, boy, that was sweet. It worked. It worked. Wow. I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. Read my message. Again, hello, Papa. Did not get my Christmas gifts. And find a notation on court to be my presence. This is not over. That's my son, Ovi, in the chat. He was adopted a long time ago here at the channel. So, yeah. That's him. That's him, guys. Say hello to my son, Ovi. I, I adopted him. Settings general. Uh, scroll down to shut down. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all. Got you, bro. Thanks, Ovi. But you're doing well against Levy. I think Levy has confidence issues playing those events, maybe because he knows he calls watching and judging him. I mean, honestly, that's a lot of pressure, though. Like, not just him, bro. You know, at one point, it was 50,000 people watching this game, watching this match. 50,000 total. I know it was like 20, 30 over there at chess.com. Then Hikaru was streaming it. And then it was other people streaming it. And at one point, it was like everybody was watching this. It was so sweet. I was like, oh, snap. I got to turn up. He's a huge fan base. Awesome. And you heard his brand. Yeah. Anything more used to pressing than Canty. If anything's Levy, more used to pressing than Canty. Yeah. He got like 500K subs. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. He had a lot to, lot to do there. That's some crazy numbers. Yeah. He up there, bro. I'm trying to get like him. Him and Naka. So he, he played E4, though. E4 here, he shut me out. My man's shut me out. And then I played Bishop D7 and got out the way. Yeah, got out the way. And then Knight to H5, which was a blunder here, actually. Apparently, Knight G2 was better. No, ain't nobody playing Knight G2. Maybe Hikaru. But ain't nobody playing Knight G2. That's not even a move. Like, what are you doing? Like, Knight G2 don't make no sense. Knight H5 was definitely different, though. I got to win one game on Sunday. Sherman has no faith in me. Yeah, I don't have faith in you either of winning a game at all. At all. Because I am adopting Mikey Slice on Sunday, guys. Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern time here on the channel. Mikey Slice will become a uh, a um, young young lad in the family. He's going to be in the family on Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. 10 games. Yeah, it's going down. Uh, I was watching Hikaru's stream and kept talking about how you were playing way better than he expected. Let's go! Ah! You know, I was so hyped. Because I was, I was playing very strong, but um, it's good to even hear that. I didn't know, I didn't see that part, but that's that feels good, man. Carlos said that about me, bro. Carlos the bro, and uh, Carlos was half man, half everything else. So somebody like that, and you know, that has a little bit of human in him, you know, like we do. We got a lot of human. He got a little bit. And uh, with that being said, man, that seems a lot. That's that's like, that's sweet, bro. That's what's up, my man's Nakamura. Shout your man's out because we was pushing tight, hitting people with that saber. Mike hit him with the trunk. <laughs> what was the score you had against Levy? It was thirteen eight. It was 13-8. He definitely went off in the bullet. Bullet was tough for me because um, it's just I don't focus on bullet too much, man. I mean, 2600, I hit bullet. I'm done, really. I don't really need to be playing bullet. I could just work for these norms now because um, it's nice. What's the Trump? Trumpowski, bro. Trumpowski. Yeah, you're definitely getting adopted Sunday, Mike Sice. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Knight f4, knight h5. Bishop takes g5, hitting the rook. <laughs> hitting the rook here. And immediately, a lot of people thought f4 was just winning, right? They're like, oh, f4. But I saw this, F4, and it was supposed to be, 
G6, wow, that's interesting. But I played bishop h6. Bishop h6, and a knight f6, I knew he had knight f6. And I was like, I guess I'm just going to have to go for this. I knew it was there, but we was both in time trouble, and I knew knight f6 was there, to be honest. I just like, hey, look, I'm in time trouble. We're going to have to play some swashbuckling. You're going to have to figure this out, right? He didn't play knight f6 either. He played rook d1, which immediately lost. I mean, not lost, but like it just was trouble. But it was a better move, knight f6. I knew it was there. He missed it. I was like, whew, all right, keep it moving. Like, ain't nothing happened. Knight g4, we out the way. Knight e3, I was coming here anyway because I was just going to be annoying. Rook b2 and knight e3 were my next moves. And then he castles. You know, he castles. Thanks for the follow, AMC Donald. I'm not a d4 kind of guy yet. All good. Thanks for the follow, bro. I remember... Um, I remember here, and I was like, oh, snap, he jumped off the deep end. Let's get some deep ends in the chat, because he definitely jumped off. I sent the stretcher to him after this one and told him, that's not a move. But last game, he did that to me. I mean, back and forth, it was like this whole time. You get a stretcher. No, you get a stretcher now. Now it's your time to sit in the stretcher, big fella. That's not a move. No, that's not a move, Canty. No, 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 that's not a move. No, 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 that's not a move, Canty. And it was just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? Right here, this is game number seven. At this point, he was up one game here. And uh, I needed to win this game so I can keep it level. I can keep it level. A two-point lead, that's tough. Pack to the work, back to work later, man. All right, Slice Master, see you later, bro. So 93, he just blundered the, the fork here, which helped. I mean, sweet, you know, I blundered too many times in this match. Knight takes F1, thank you so much. Kirisami, 312 with the tier one. Let's welcome that Jedi here. Put some sabers in the air like we just don't care appreciate you the mad ambulance shows up yo infotech yeti with the follow appreciate you so i take the rook now and the rest honestly was kind of like clockwork here hey can i hit him with rook b2 because that's what we do right rook b2 that's what we do and then we push this boy down and we clown so bishop f3 i play a5 he played e5 and immediately i mean he doing his thing levy plays some strong chess and faster time controls strong strong chess so he had his bishops pointing here he was also very low on time here extremely low on time i know i was up a lot more time i was up i don't think i was up like 40 seconds and we was both under a minute which means he had like two three seconds you know with this one second increment so he was kind of blowing through moves i played bishop b5 because capturing why would i capture and give him counterplay the rook's hanging my bishop's hanging why would i do this there's no sense to do such a thing so i played bishop b5 hit the rook he played c4 i take it then he went rook e at e1 to push this pawn through and i noticed i got one too so he played i played a3 he plays e, e7 i went rook e8 let me turn um i guess can i just turn this off yeah so uh rook e8 and then he played bishop to b5 immediately i know where he's going right but I'm trying to queen quickly. So very quick tactics uh, were, were, were found here after a4 or a2. He went bishop d7. I mean, he had no time left anyway, too. So he has to, like, do what he got to do. Right? Understand here. I was I was like this the last game. Rook takes e7. And immediately I'm queening or I'm playing rook b1 immediately. Right? So, and also d7 was hanging. So he takes. I check. And actually, I had, like, 40 seconds right here. Maybe 30. Maybe 30. Um, color binary thanks so much for the follow i was the right here i actually sat here and i thought for like just a few seconds because it felt like you know hey look i don't want to miss a mate i don't want to get embarrassed here i <laughs> i know he has a check here and a check here i'm not trying to get made it so let me make sure i don't mess this thing up so i played rookie two because not only is it blocking the check now it's threatening to trade and then after her captures it's going to be bishop takes e2 followed by bishop takes h5 e1 is hanging as well so everything's going to drop here he played bishop here and i just actually before i could make the move he resigned and that was checkmate right here it was a1 queen oh you might be right ak akaria aside that's probably why yeah that probably was that a dollar sign might have been equal sign it's probably what it should have been but then how to become a dollar sign which is kind of weird but queen takes a e1 is mate here right so bam i win this game let's go we even right okay let's go even slate three and a half three and a half at this point this was the last game of the five minute then we move into the three minute the three minute which was here um yeah we moved into the three minute right here so this is three one and i lost this game right after so after i won i lost right i won two in a row Oh, no, wait, never mind. Hold up. I lost one. We just went over that one. Then I won this one. And then I won again. So I won two in a row. And I was nice. I was like, let's go. I got two in a row. So even after I even the score, I won again. And this is this game. So we're going to go over this one now. Let's grab the, uh, the PGM. 
Hopefully they let us grab this one. Hopefully they let us grab this one. Let's go to live chess. Analysis board. Oh my goodness, they tripping today. What is you talking about? Was it another promotion in this one game or something? Like, how is this even possible today? So not this one, not this one. It's this one. This is the one we're on. And let's analyze this one. Okay, here we go, guys. Here we go. In this game, I played white. And again, this was another Scandi. Another Scandi land. They could have checked with the knight, though. Actually, never mind. All good, Patrick. All good, my guy. All right, so here we go. This is game number uh, three, six, seven, eight. This is game number eight. Game number eight here. It's all tied up. He takes d5. He goes back into the Scandi line. So just like we looked at in the first game, that Scandi game where it was wild, I got in trouble and stuff. So I made some some uh, changes. I found your channel through the I'm Not a GM matches, and I'll be watching your future streams. Got to run. Getting late. Thanks for the content. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out, man. You have a good one, my guy. Yeah, bro. 52 was not was a promotion. Wait, not 52. It's kind of weird, right? But it's all good, man. I ain't even tripping on it. We're going to look at it right here. So queen takes d5, knight of three. I mean, this is what we went through before. Remember, we already kind of looked at this game in the first game we analyzed today. So I played h3 once again. And this time I played an early c5. I think I went knight c3 last time. But this time I went with the early c5. And then I played knight c3 now, but just kind of the same moves in a way. But then he played a6 and switched it up. I think he just didn't like knight b5 for some reason. I don't know. Maybe knight b5, bishop f4, but I didn't like this move. a6 is excellent, apparently, though. a6 is a great move. I was like, I just didn't think it was right. But bishop f4, because now I get this tempo here on this pawn. It's a very nice tempo. And you either have you got to play like c6, knight d7, which is extremely cramped. And he didn't. He just gave it up. So I'm like, okay, this pawn's hanging. I don't see an immediate threat. You know what? I don't care. And, I'm, and I took the pawn. Bishop takes f4. He played rook c8. I backed that boy up to civilization. And now here, I am literally up a pawn. So he played rook d8. I played rook d1. This was a little bit easier of a game here. He played knight b4. To try to play knight d5. A very common idea here when you're facing an isolated pawn. This pawn is isolated. So you want to control the square in front of it. And usually with a knight. And you want to trade the pieces that defend it. Meaning my knight and the rook. So this becomes a extra weak. So uh, he played knight before I played rookie one just to uh, stay here on this file with a smile kind of thing. Backwards pawn. Yeah, it's also backwards as well. So he plays a uh, knight um, B to D5 and I play 94. I don't want to really trade that much yet, but I like 94. I'm also maybe swinging this way and I'm aiming at the D6 square. Knight takes queen takes. If any anything happens with this knight, I'm taking on B7. So what did he do? He played b6. And right here, I knew it was going to be a wrap. I saw this line instantly. Instantly, I saw when he played b6, I could play queen b7. Both are hanging. I can hit him with rook e5, and we wide, and we live. Rook takes d5, do it real live, and then take on e7. You know, so it was real nice. Back with, yo, I know, mad chess stuff, but still not 1400 elo. You just got to keep working, bro. It's going to be something. Eventually, eventually it's going to work. Right? But he played b6 here. I think he was getting in time trouble, too. Time trouble gets us all. But b6 happened. And then call arrive, right? Can you show that queen b7 line? It's right here. Snap. He took on b6. It's like forced in a way. I hit him with queen b7. Here you go. And then it is. He went back to d5 because it's basically forced. And then I hit him with rook e5. And we live. Oh, my goodness. And then now this is a double attack here. Yeah, this knight's a, a defended here. But it's called removing the defender. What's defending the bishop? The knight is. So if I remove it, bam, bam. I hit him. Spam. And then that's, that's a piece. So now I'm up a piece here. Now I'm up a piece here. And I'm like, yes, this is the game I needed. So now I'm about to go up a game. So I needed to focus here because if I win this game, now I'm going to be up, I think, for the first time in the match, actually. So queen takes c7. He played rook to d7. I played queen d7 just to hold the rooks here, of course. Uh, and then he, I was thinking he was going to play rook d8. And I think I was just going to play, play around a little bit. Queen b7. If he comes back here, then d5 was hanging. So I was going to play in that manner. Jump quickly, yeah. So I was probably gonna, uh, gonna do that, but okay. So he went queen f queen c2 here. Great move, honestly, hitting the rook. I need to play rook f1 to hold everything together. And if he was gonna take on b2, I was gonna take on d5, and I was gonna be fine. So he played queen d3 here. Here's the intention, guys. Oh my goodness, like watch this. If I play something crazy like bishop g3, oh my goodness. Woo, you see the engine go crazy? Look what he was threatening. Queen takes f1. 
And then Rook check. Oh my goodness. This would hurt. This would be like, I, I don't want to play no more. I just, you know what? I'm not seeing the board. I'm going to just give you the match. Because, you know, losing this one like that. Oh man, that hurts. In fashion. Queen sack. Ouch. Yikes. That will shock you right there. That'll put you on your feet real quick. Real quick, big fella. So you can't even do anything. Like queen takes f1 is real. That's a real threat. So the only move that I could play really was knight e5. And I wanted to play this anyway, but I was pointing, I was watching what he was doing. Knight e5, I'm now hitting f7. It can't be defended. So queen takes d4 is probably the best. That's what he played. He took the pawn at least. He's going to get a pawn out of it. I took on f7 with check. Flex real hard. He played king h8. And here I couldn't find the right sequence because this was harder than you than it looks. Honestly, this was much harder than it looks. So after queen b7, um, the engine, of course, is able to crush here. Queen h5 is best. They said queen b7 as an alternative. I'm not playing no queen b7. It just looks ridiculous. But he played king h7. And here I think I was getting a little low on time. So I made sure that I repeated moves first. And then I went queen f5. Because I just wanted to reroute just to see what happens. You know, like I'm going to, he needs to make a move. I'm going to put my queen somewhere else. I'm also threatening like check and knight d6 in some cases. So let's see what happens. He played rick f8. And here, guys, uh, first off, hold on. Let me, let me ask you in the chat. Let me ask you, what are you going to play here? After rick f8, what would you play in the chat? Let's get some, let's get some, um, some, some uh, people. Let's get some, some answers. What would you play after Rook F8? I'm very curious on what you would play. Queen E6, 1 0 from Don't Cry Wolf. Queen E6, okay. Knight F7 from My Man's Rive. Knight F7, Knight H6. Knight F7 from Sohab. Knight F7 from Tix Tixty. Knight C6, okay. Ooh, Knight C6, that's a spicy one. I didn't see that one. I don't really like it, but knight c6, I didn't even consider that one. That's a spicy one. Knight f7, knight f7, queen, x, queen e6, rook takes f2. Uh, queen b1, knight f7. Hide the computer lines. The computer line is uh, is not on here. It says knight f7, right? But, oh, you mean like here? Yeah, I can't even I can't even hide that. But, I mean, it, literally, if the computer was not here showing you, like, oh, knight f7, right? But, you know, here, check this out, guys. This is what would have happened. If queen e6 happened, you see it now, right? Yeah, you see it, don't cry wolf. Look at this. He could do it two separate ways. This is the strongest way. Queen takes f2, check. Oh my goodness. Wow, what am I looking at? Queen sack and mate on the back rank. Oh my good. I saw this, and this is why I was stopping and thinking. Because I know that he's very strong. And I know what I would do. I'm very strong. So what happens is is a lot of times you have to make sure you keep threats on the board even when you down even he's down a piece here but he's still keeping a mate threat on the board if i'm not careful with my life here my rook is hang my queen's hanging so i had to go knight f7 knight f7 he went king g8 and then i could play queen e6 the the idea here is if he takes then i just take on c8 and i'm also threatening a smother at the same time his best move queen f6 queen f6 is best half the trade and here I was like, what do I do? Right? What do I do? Actually, knight g5 was good, but I was running out of time, so I just made a move here. And he actually didn't have to take this. I mean, he like queen knight takes this. Uh, this says that this is best, but I thought king h8 was better. I thought king h8 was better because now, oh, I could take on d5 though, so maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I thought king h8 was a little better because here my knight's getting the d4. Once my knight gets here, the game's over. I knew that if my knight got to d4. Uh, the game could be over because I'm controlling the C file now. Now the squares that he can use to get to the C file, he can't do it no more. So I knew that was coming. So rook f6, I played knight d4, and now the rook can't get to the file. So what does he do? He threatens the pawn, but from another file, I push it, and then I, lo I locked it in. Locked it in, and now I'm going to lock this bishop in. And look at this nice setup. Everything's defended. The bishop's in the center of the board, I and g7. f is defending the bishop. Bishop's defending the knight. Everything's defended over here, and I'm just going to tuck my king, and then I'm going to maneuver my rook somewhere, like rook f3, rook g3, or if the file opens, I'm able to take a file. So what happens? a5 or a4, I mean. Um, rook f2. I just played this just to like make a move, honestly, gain some time. Then I take take, and then I play king h2, no checks on the back rank. He moves. I take the file. And then I play uh, g4 first, which is an accuracy. I didn't have to play this, but I just played it. 
Rook c7, king f8, and now this is the rest here. Let's fast forward a little bit. Now I know I'm kind of messed this up. Bishop takes d4 was good. Okay, so that was a good move. I thought that I was like, I thought I botched this in a way because I let him get so much play around here. So I was like, man, I know this was wrong. King h5 was a miss win after bishop c5 check. So let's see it. Turn about here. Knight g7. Oh, wow, that's nasty. And then rook e7. I ain't see all of that. Oof. Yikes, I didn't see it in that much time. I was actually, I was low on time. So what about King G8? Is that mate and two? Take and Bishop D4, right? Yeah, that's it. Oof, that's strong. Bobby Fisher mate. Yeah, that's strong, bro. Wow. But I just went, I just walked my king up. Check. I went, uh, but he went Bishop F6. I went King G6. And then he went here and that was just enough there. Takes, 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 takes. And then King here. And then I pre-moved this move here because I knew he was going to do this. Because, like, who doesn't do that, right? <laughs> you know, I pre-moved it. Now, if I didn't, I still would be able to cast that pawn, luckily, like knight f1. But um, I definitely pre-moved h takes h5 because I know he's going to do that. And then I think he flagged here. Is it say that? Something like that. Flag, but he flagged. But after, I mean, this was uh, even now. now. Oh, actually, no, this was the game I went up. I went up a game here, and I was hyped. Like, let's go. I'm up a game. Ah, let's go, bro. I need to close this out. If I win a second game, this could be over, except until the bullet portion, because I know it's just bullet is so hard, right? So, but this was that game. I got up a game. Now he resigned. You see, you see, you see the clock when they flag. Oh, okay. I don't know that. But yeah. Um, so that was that game, guys. I am now up a game in the match. And then this is the 3 1 portion. 3-1 portion. We go into the 3-1 portion. I'm up a, I'm up a game. Oh, no. This is the 3-1 portion. This is the first game of the 3-1. And then I was up a game. Okay, so I won the first one. And then he crushed me the second one right here. I mean, literally going back and forth. Like, I hit him with the saber. Shing, shing, body drop. You know, he respawned. And then we fight again. And then he just hit me with a, a, a doo -wop, the a 2-11 real quick. Slice, slice. And have a nice day. So, this is what happened, right? Uh, let's look at this one. So, uh, resign. He hit you with that bishop check KO. He hit you with, yeah, he, yeah, he smacked me this game. I'm not going to lie. This wasn't a good game. This one, I definitely got hit with that, with that thing. So, 94, H4, C5, right? And after this, right, we go same line, same stuff we've been watching, right? Check, takes, and then I play E6. Because I was like, man, let's, let's play this E6 line. I've been, you know, we took a quick break. The engine said try E6. So, I'm like, okay, let's try it. And then this was not the way. This was not the way. Takes, takes, right? Now, he didn't take. He actually played f3. I played queen g6, which was good. And then I played bishop e7, which was a mistake. But I should have played bishop d6, actually. Which uh, I think I ended up playing that later because I remember watching the engine like play better. And they played bishop d6. And then knight a6. I mean, just garbage here. Straight up garbage. I mean, it doesn't feel like that, though. Knight b4 is coming, right? So, you know, I'm feeling pretty good. He played d6. And I was expecting this. I wanted him to actually play d6 because it was weak here. It was a little weak. So I was going to play bishop d8. I mean, I had some real good ideas. At least it felt like it, you know. <laughs> At least it felt like I had some good ideas. d6, bishop d8. He went bishop c4. And then I played knight b4, hitting knight c2. He plays rook c1. I played bishop a5, which is a mistake. But, but I'm like, I needed a move, bro. I needed something to do. Thanks for the follow, yellow O C H O C H R three. Thank you so thank you so much. Welcome to the stream. So this was uh this was bad though. This got real bad. I played Queen F6 because I was getting in time trouble and I didn't know what to do. Like I'm like, man, this hurts. Like, what do I do right now? He played 92. I play A6. He played G5. I played Queen F5. And here we go. E4, H5, and then spink. Oh my goodness. And as soon as he took this, I was like, yeah, I gotta resign. There's nothing I can do. King takes is a fork. King f8 is, is is over. So I went king d8, and then that was it. I was like, yeah, this is not, I'm not ever taking that engine line again in life. Like, what was he thinking? What was the engine thinking to play this line? Like, what are you talking about with your life? I was so like, yeah, no more of that. It was trash. It was straight up trash, to be honest. So queen e4, e3. Uh, I should have played e5, but I played e6 in this game, actually. So... E6, C4. All those lines feel like a landmine when you play with black. It really is, to be honest, bro. It really is. But it was, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, E5 is is what I would play if I played this again. I would play the E5 line. Sort of Bodoni like Yeah, this was tough, man. This was real tough. Thanks for the follow, Kratos. Godsman. Godsman. Thank you so much. Mr. Rio, we've been on an hour and 40. We got like 20 minutes left. Um, and then we usually do like two hours. Um, but, man, that's like, uh, that's crazy. Like. 
crazy game. I got crushed this game, right? So now it's back even. I'm like, dang, bro. I was up a game. All I needed to do was win another one. And it was so hard. Do you know how to get the development versions of Oh, Stockfish New? No, I don't. That's a great question, bro. Great question. This is a fun match. You both were great. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. Yeah, dude, to the Bullet Games were close. Yeah, Bullet Games was tough. But, I mean, that's the reason why he 2,800 plus in Bullet. You know, you don't just get there. You do not just get to 2,800 plus. We're going to leave that right there, okay? We're going to leave that. We ain't going to say nothing else about that, okay? You do not just get to 2,800 plus uh, without being real good. That man is a monster. So, let's go uh, to the next game. So, at this point, it's even. At this point, it's even. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. Brahinian V. Hit me in Discord and I can show you. Okay. Yeah, so I lost that game, right? And then here's the next one, right? We both, like, I mean, like, we was back and forth, bro. This was crazy. And I was so close to 2,600 on him again. I'm like, yes, let's get to 26 on, on Levy. Let's go, bro. And it just was tough, man. It was very tough. So check this game out right here. Now we had a French, which I prepared for. I was prepped for his French. You know, because there's a line that it was a special line that we've played before. I actually beat Levy. The first time we played, I beat him on stream. I was so hyped. But not on my stream because I wasn't streaming then. It's crazy, right? But he was streaming and I played him. And I was like, yo, I just beat Levy. Oh, snap, right? So, you know, we played this and he played Bishop E7. Now, there's a different way I play the French now, but I was playing this. And, um, you know, uh, Levy, uh, Levy did that. So, um, thank you for the follow. What are you talking about? I think you get the more win out of this match. Thanks, bro. Appreciate it. French blows. <laughs> French is good. It depends on who it is. But after knight of three, though, uh, let's see what happened. Though. She takes f6. I played knight of three. And he didn't play this f5 move that I was expecting. Queen e2, b5. And castle queen side, right? Bishop b7. He's supposed to play f5. And he never did. Which made everything completely different on my prep wise. So now I'm like, well, he's not playing the F5 move. So I don't even want to play this line no more. <laughs> like, because uh, I was expecting him to do that because that's what he did the last time we played. He played it in this fashion and let me get what I wanted. But in this way, he played it without playing F5, keeping, you know, the knights out of E5 and G5. And I was like, okay, I like this. That seems like Levy avoiding the obvious move. Yeah, I was like, you know, I like this, Levy. That's pretty nice because I was definitely prepped for you, big fella. So I played King B1. I got in trouble. I'm going to be honest here. I got in some real trouble. Yeah, I got in some real trouble right here. So um, what happened was Bishop B2. He played Queen A5. I played Knight C3. He went here. I went Rook H1. My idea here, though, is to play Knight H4, Knight F5. You know, and that was my idea because all this is very solid. And I want to be able to have the Rook here to do stuff. So... Thanks for the follow, Fox Fox Frost. Welcome, bro. Knight to b6 on the board and then knight h4. Knight h4 is a mistake. I should have played knight d2. But this is passive. Like, I feel like I'm just defending. And I'm an attacker. So I feel like I'm just defending, bro. These knights seem hella unhappy in the general. Just me. No, they are. They def Well, I mean, honestly, they're, they are unhappy because they don't have really squares here. But they can this one's active because he can capture. This one is unhappy, but we were waiting for f5, but we can't do that. So I went this route to try to go knight f5, which I actually did. And I'll show you guys. Is there any other tournaments coming up for yourself? Um, Actually, yeah. There's some. Um, Actually, this month I might be going to. Online? Um, not sure yet. I mean, I'm just studying up, getting ready anyway. So... But uh, knight h4, though, knight h4 was a mistake. He played bishop b4. And here, I'm not even going to lie. I straight up just blundered. Like, no, I thought I had an extra move. For some reason, like, you know, you just see a ghost. And I was like, what am I doing? I took on d5. And, like, I was like, what am I doing? The engine says this is good. No, this ain't good. This is not good at all. I played knight takes d5. This was garbage. And I was like, bro, what am I doing, right? So I was like, dang, bro, I can't let him win his game. And watch to see what happened, right? Knight takes d5, I'm straight up losing, bro. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I'm just losing. You can just take the exchange here. But it's not, I mean, yeah, yeah, he's, he's losing. I'm losing. But his king, like, there's still counterplay. But black should probably win this game. He didn't take the rook. He actually hit me with this check, which I actually thought, wow, the engine didn't like this. I actually thought this check was bomb. But at the, at the end, at the end of this calculation, I did see that the combination that I had, which was this, pawn takes, which is forced. He takes here with the idea of queen b2 check because he's going to mate me if I play queen b2. Thanks for the follow. Gunther fall. Gunther fall. 
or four. But uh, I played a3 because this is forced now. I'm stopping queen b4. And look at this. It's equal. It's zeros right here. That's crazy. But it's because he sacked a piece. But it also says a lot about his attack too right here. And then I blundered again, right? Watch this. He played b4. And what I'm supposed to do is play bishop c4. As soon as I move, I saw it. As soon as I move, as soon as I move, I played king a2. And this is a wrap. This is over. But he missed the check here. It was supposed to be this. And then he takes. And I'm like, dang. Mm-mm-mm. And this is all kind of stuff you miss, right? You know, I missed a lot of, I missed a lot of, you know, swashbuckling, hit this man, hit him twice. You know, I missed some, he missed some. It was a wild match, bro. It was definitely a lot there. And we were getting in time trouble a lot. We both were, right? Because this tough stuff here. King A2, he, he didn't check me. And I was like, oh my goodness, I can breathe. I can breathe. Crush my heart real quick. And was like, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Bishop C4. But pawn takes A3. And then I play bishop b3. Lock it up. Lock it up. Now, at this point, I've realized I'm about to win. Right here, I realized, like, bro, I'm about to win this game. Because he was getting low on time. And I'm up a piece now. And he's not mating anymore. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm about to win. I'm about to win. Okay, then, you you know, you got to hold it together. Hold it together. Don't, you know, don't get it. Besides yourself, you know, you, you could win this game. Fit five, six, seven, eight. Sathian. Sathian, thanks for the follow. So, uh, I'm up now. He takes on e1. I take it back, right? I'm up a piece, though. I'm up a piece. He plays queen b4. I'm like, I don't know what that do. Knight f5 anyway. That's where we wanted to go. Said that was a mistake, but I don't care, engine. Knight f5. I'm up. Then he plays a5. I'm like, ooh, that's a good move. He about to play a4. So then I flex real hard on him and hit him with queen a, queen x a3, bro. So look at this move here. I actually, at first, I thought I did hang a rook, but I actually didn't. Because at first, I'm like, no, I can take that. There's mate. But then for some reason, my mind went elsewhere and thought that he could take this and it wasn't mate for some reason but i did realize oh there is mate here because if queen takes e1 ouch gg start a new game this is a family channel gg that was nasty so queenie queenie seven was mate so he kind of either had to take the queen or like play something else he played a4 and that was smart he really opened the file here and i mean this was like this was nice he opened the file i played 93 reason why i went 93 is because i'm about to make everything solid you know, I don't, I'm not ready yet. You know, I need to consolidate. I need to really control the position. So I bring the knight back, defending the g-pawn, defending the c-pawn, closer to my king, and it's defended. So you play rook to g8, and then I play bishop takes c6, also uh, over defending and keeping the pawn here. But I, I figure probably c4 is better, but I really wanted to snatch this pawn. He played here, which was beautiful, threatening this check, which is strong. I was like, dang, that's a good move, bro. That was a good move. Nice c4 was a move too as well. But I was like, dang, that was sweet, my guy. So I played d5. I'm like, nah, bro. We're going to have to shut you down right now. Not today. Not tomorrow. Right now. Rook e5. And then I played c4. They didn't like this move. But I'm like, man, nah, bro. We need to keep this here. You need to stay away. He played uh, f5, threatening f4. I played g3, stopping f4. And then he plays rook e4 uh, right here. Rick says uh, e takes d5 was better. But then I played... Uh, rook to d1, which I didn't have to play this. I could have just played d6. But actually, no, I did this to stop rook d4 and also be behind the pawn. So that's a logical human move to make. Nothing wrong with that. So forget about what the engine says. Now, e5 and then e3, uh, d6, actually, hitting the rook. This was getting sloppy. Yeah, this was getting very sloppy. Bishop here, but it is also time trouble for both of us. Then I snapped on d4 and then I snapped on f5. Looks like he got a queen, right? But I can defend. And now I'm pushing. He played here, and at first, I'm like, oh, come on. I'm sitting here like, dang. Well, I still can win this, but dang, bro, I'm giving up this D-pawn. But I really wasn't. After pushing, King E7 was a straight-up blunder here, which, honestly, I didn't see it until he played it. I was like, oh, wait, hold up. I got to check. I got to check. Thanks for the follow, Doom Jazz. I got to check. So I checked him, and then I snapped, and then he pushed, and Bishop F3, and then he resigned right here. He was low on time, too, but he resigned. There's no queen. Yeah, and I was like, yes, bro. Finally. So now there's no two-game lead. It's now even. Once again, even. He probably saw that one, too. Yeah, I saw, actually saw it on the stream. But yeah, is uh now it's back to even again after he smacked me real hard in that Trumpowski. Never playing that way again. Then I came right back and hit that man with a move. So uh, that was that one. And what time are we at? 149. We got time. We got time. We looked at that one. We looked at this one. Okay. We have this one and this one. So we still got like three, four games left. But 
we're going to end it right here. We're going to end it right here. So we'll have like part three and finish it off tomorrow or another day. But yeah, uh, was this three minute blitz? Um, yes, this was five, one and three, one, five, one, three, one and and bullet, which is one, one, which is one second increment. So, yeah, but we're going to do some more games um, like tomorrow or the next day and which will which will finish off this little analysis series with those.